I have a new potential client, and so this video is going over something I do on occasion when I want to really wow a client is, can I spend 30 minutes and just punch in that wow factor with a new client that has no experience with me? And how do we do that? Well, I have Kitchen Quick Tools. Some of you are aware of that. It's in my shop, and I use them every day, and it's made it so that I can draw out kitchens very, very quickly. And when you have something like in the lower hand corner of my screen, you might see something a little bit different. You're seeing a preview of a cropped portion of my second screen. And on my second screen in our local MLS or your realtor.com or your Zillow.com, you might have some images of an existing home. And in this case, I do. This client just purchased this home. So this was on MLS. So I was able to see the existing kitchen that they want to remodel. And wouldn't it be fantastic if I showed up to my meeting with an already done model of their existing kitchen only. Now, I am still going to bill in contract for a full as-built workup, but it is pretty cool to show up with something like this already ready. It's just a huge wow factor. And how much time input do you need when you get up to a pro power user level? So let's go ahead and try to draw this kitchen from view. I'm going to pull a perspective floor overview. I like to draw in 3D, so that's really nice for me. Um, I'm just going to kind of check myself, see where my camera's at. I actually want to rotate this camera 90 degrees so that I'm working from this side right here um, because I want this to be my plan north over here. So I, I've got a series of images I'm going to be using for reference, and I'm going to use my knowledge of kitchens to kind of understand how this space is put together. So let's start with a base cabinet. We're going to click it to the corner here. That's going to turn it into a corner cabinet, and I have a tool that automatically adjusts that cabinet. Now, if I wanted to go back a level, let me show you what happens when I also draw in a corner upper cabinet, and then I can switch on that same tool and switch to the plan mode, and that'll make both cabinets an inside corner. Kind of clever. So let me get to this next cabinet, place it. This is going to be a dishwasher. I want to make sure that, uh, there we go, clicking on the front of that cabinet. And then I've got a base cabinet that's probably a, a 33 or a 36 inch base. Let's call it a 36 inch base. And I've got a click sink to drop in here. I'm going to actually tab into it and bring it forward just maybe about two inches straight forward. So type in two inches. There we go. I could, of course, use my faucet to place in here as well. My faucet is set up to place on center line. So I can actually click to the back of this. And you can see that there it actually the bounding box is set to center. So it's very easy for me to center up on the cabinet if I want to. And then it looks like we do, in fact, have a window since we've got our um, our cabinet in place. It's going to automatically cut this window when I'm resizing windows. I like to turn on my snap grids. I don't like to show the snap grid and then I switch it to a three inch increment, which is helpful for kitchens so that I can get this this window place exactly here. There we go. And then I've got a quick tool to turn this into a casement window. It does in fact look like this stretches a little bit. So I'm going to do a cone centric move and there we go. That looks eh, more or less correct. Maybe a little bit off. It looks like it's off center a little bit um, on this side, 54 inch, 51 inch. So probably a four foot window, something like that. Got an upper cabinet that goes here. Pull this back looks like it might be 15 inches and then i can duplicate reflect about center here and it looks like on the other side it's in fact like a 21 inch cabinet and then i can dupe this over tab enter 21 inch again i can also dupe this over again get a 21 inches over one more time and it looks like this might be or like a 27 inch cabinet, 24 inch cabinet that's raised up six inches or something like that. So I have a quick tool for making this a glass cabinet upper. And because we had it in the plan mode, I'm gonna change it to object mode. That'll make it just that cabinet gets painted as that glass cabinet upper. I'm gonna turn on our line drawing on top so you guys, the viewer can see what I'm looking at a little bit easier. There we go. And then I want to duplicate this across this unit here without needing to snap. I might do that in plan view so I can actually draw some reference lines here. I'm going to draw this line out and then I'm going to use my center and then my center between to snap to the side of this cabinet and the side of this cabinet. That way I can take this corner cabinet right here and duplicate about center. Let's try that again. Duplicate about this center line. 
Oh, I grabbed the upper cabinet. Let's try that again. one more time. There we go. Then I've got what looks like a cooktop countertop here, right? You can see in the preview, we can see the inches creeping out. 33 or a 36 inch cabinet probably. And then I have a quick cooktop tool. Place that on top there. And then on the back side, looks like we've got some cabinets there as well. Let me see here. Yeah, it looks like a full height back cabinet. Let's get to a peninsula reference. There we go. This might be an 18 inch unit or a 15 inch unit. All by what looks like a 30 inch unit or maybe it's a 36 inch unit. And then I'll use my quick three drawer painter tool, put that in place. All right, that's looking pretty good. Shoot up to another couple reference shots. There's my next reference shot. Looks like I have a 27 inch base or so. And then a 36 inch upper followed by a reefer cabinet. I've got a couple different versions of these. I'm just going to click in there and snap it into place. Make sure my bumps are turned on. Uh, because it's blocked, it's bumping with, with the uh, moldings. So I need to unblock it. That way I can snap it over. There we go. And then it looks like we've got a full height cabinet. And it looks like that full height cabinet might be a little bit wider than the reefer. So maybe a 42 inch cabinet. Something like that. And we've got a two panel, <clears throat> two panel lower. I don't have something pre-built for that right now. Actually I do, but it would take a little bit of searching. So instead I'm just going to split it and kind of create that look. Let's just do an equalize for all these. So I'm going to come to the parent stack equalize. There we go. Then it looks like we've got a wall. So I'm going to get to my interior wall tool, draw this all the way across like that. And it, since I'm in the perspective view, we've got this framing look so I can bump this wall to it and then maybe I'll drop it back one inch. That's going to drag this upper cabinet with it. We can snap that back and then we've got an automatic one inch filler. I don't know what kind of door this is. It looks like maybe it's a doorway around this corner. Yeah, it looks like there's a doorway and then there's a full height oven cabinet. So I'm going to switch to my full height cabinet tool and then quick click my oven tool. It's going to automatically convert this. And I've got a base cabinet. Looks like it might be, oh, let's call it 30 inches. Got another base that's a little bit of a funny one. So we're going to drag this up to the point where we're going to say that it's uh we're going to do a 30 inch drag, making this a six inch cabinet. And then let's open this up and you can see what it did. It converted this. And so finished floor to top is probably a 30 inch desktop. And it's probably about a 33, something like that. Drag this one over and we need to drag this down. Oops, that was actually dragging it out. There we go. Drag it down six inches. And we'll convert it to a three drawer base, which I have a painter tool for that as well. Might need to adjust this base a little bit. Let's open this up. This looks like it might be a locked cabinet. No, it's not. So let's keep the five inch drawer locked. Let's just, um, so we can click on this lock from auto resize. And then when we adjust this size, it should automatically adjust the lower one. So let's go six inches there. There we go. That's more, more of what we're looking at here. And it looks like it might be just like an 18 inch unit. Or maybe it's a 15. There we go. I'm going to drag this upper in place, snap it to its neighbor here. We got another upper in place. We can immediately make this a glass shelf unit, but then I want to come in here and edit. Looks like we're going to split this horizontally. Let's make this lower section only six inches. We're going to switch it to being an opening. And then we'll split it vertically a couple times. 
let's get to those separations. Looks like the item width there might be three quarters of an inch. Same with this one as well, three quarters of an inch. And that's looking pretty close. We can, of course, grab this, duplicate it about itself, shrink it back down. And this is looking pretty close, right? That's pretty good. So um, we could just add backsplash automatically to all these. So I've got an add backsplash tool, and we can do it in the plan view here. And that's going to add that five inch splash. And then the only thing here is we're going to add another six inches. Is that right? Six inches to this splash? Let's take a look. Backsplash is going to be 10 inches. There we go. That looks about right. And then let's paint this whole room. So let's do the whole room. And we're going to replace this. There we go. Looks like we got one missing there, the molding. And this is really starting to look like that shot. Let's add a couple new features in here. I think I've got a maybe a pocket door here. I think that this space is... Possibly a little bit smaller than what we've got drawn. And we've got, using picture reference, so we've got a slider there. I think this is actually my slider. It's tucked up a little closer to this cabinet. Maybe it's a six foot slider. <laughs> a little sneeze there, sorry. <clears throat> We'll drop in a window. I've got a quick tool for making this a triple casement. And we can do concentrically jump this. Maybe it's 72. I don't think it's bigger than that. It's probably a 70, it's a six foot. Maybe we'll open this up and change the component sides. So let's see, where are we here? Side component side, 18 inches. And that center is fixed. There we go. Make sure it's centered up on the room. And let's get to an overview here. Drop some can lights in. I know that there's four can lights in this section. I can duplicate about center. Let's draw a line. I love doing line reference. So it's center and then control center to be able to center between this cabinet and the wall. There we go. And now we have a line there. And I can highlight these cans. Duplicate about. Pretty clever. I like to do a control paste workflow. So I'm just placing these cans directly in line. Not really sure where these all go, so I'm not too worried about it either. Let's bring these in a little bit tighter there. Just want to get some general lighting. And then let's take a look through this MLS. There we go. We got a picture of a backdrop. Isn't that cool? So let's make a backdrop and really sell this. So there's one thing that's going to change. I know that part of this is interior wall and part of it's exterior wall. It looks like we've got a bump out sunroom. It might have been an addition. Who knows? And it's probably going to have some windows here. Not sure what those windows are. I'm not too worried about it. We're just giving the look and feel of this for right now. And then let's take this. I'm going to uh, Windows Shift S and do a screen clipping of this over here. And let's take it into Photoshop. Let's do a new document. And I'm gonna make it the size of this clipboard and we can paste. And I'm gonna make something out of this. We'll make a, a panoramic. We won't make a spherical pano, but we'll make a pano. So let's do a little touch up here. Just grab this, highlight this MLS and get a little bit of sky back in there. And then the main thing I want to do with this, let me um, control all control C to copy. And then I'm going to do a crop and I want to make sure that the ratio is like a four to one crop. And then I'll drag this out, but then I'll hold my alt key to drag it out um, kind of concentrically, let it snap. And then I can commit that crop back out a little bit. Let's paste a few things. Let's control T to modify them. Right, snap it in place. Um, we can control J, control T to modify, snap that in place. You do a couple of things to kind of just patch this shift draw a line that's going to patch it in a little bit. Maybe might need to infill a little bit here. So let's just grab this here, shift select, grab this here. Um, let's merge all these layers. 
and then we can fill and do content aware. See how close that gets. Pretty good. Not too bad. Um, let's do a little bit of patchwork here. Not too bad. Keep in mind, clients barely going to see this, so it's just for the effect, right? Let's do a little stamp here. I can use this for reference and kind of blend this in. Kind of get in there. There we go. All in all, good enough. So I'm going to change the exposure a little bit so I can play with this a little bit more on the chief side of things. Um, so to do that, I want to drop an exposure adjustment layer. That way I can adjust this on the fly. Let's turn our gamma down a little bit and kind of make the scene uniform and then drop our exposure just a little bit. Something like this. This gives us a little bit more freedom in the shot when we're... Um, exporting this as a backdrop it's a 4k backdrop so let's call this live feed backdrop let's come back in the chief pull this camera actually I want to get rid of this camera so we're going to control w close that camera down let's get our camera tool get a standard um, full camera in here let's edit the active view after we drop in let's see in my materials i want to get to backdrops so i'm going to make a new backdrop i'm going to locate that i'm going to just start typing in this stream i think it was stream right oh what did we call it ca backdrops interesting i lost it where'd it go live feed that's what we called it Live feed backdrop. Let's call it a Sphero, um, but we need to make some adjustments here. It's not going to be a 180. It's going to be like a 90. And then vertical minimum, let's call this 45. And let's 45, 90. That's all right. Eye level is probably about 0.3, something like this. And now that we have that, let's check it out. So let's drop that in. That's actually pretty good right off the bat. There we go. So the only other thing I want to do, edit the active view, get into my backdrop panel, and I'm going to adjust the horizontal offset, maybe 27 degrees or so. Yeah, let's get back there. That tree's off to the side a little bit. So drop that back down to like 12. There we go. And let's pull a PBR and see what this is looking like. So next thing I want to do is I want to adjust that backdrop. Well, let's try a couple things. Let's try adjusting it up 22. And actually, that's pretty bright, right? You can only see it once we get close to that window. Let's drop it back down. Let's also adjust our sun. 230, let's make it like 12. See what happens there. There we go. Now we're starting to see that backdrop a little bit. Get the sun flowing in. Let's drop this back down to like 12. That's a little low. It's also not quite as bright and crisp as I want it to be. So maybe we'll put some contrast in here, right? So let's adjust that gamma back and exposure back and do a second export here. So we'll go live feed high contrast get back to this and we can just copy this or excuse me we could have duplicated it and then let's open it up and point to that that different item there live feed high contrast there we go now you see the settings uh, resorted back right so horizontal offset we had it like about 12 um, but everything else looks about right. Vertical max, vertical min. Yeah. All right. And let's pop this one in and see what it looks like. A little brighter off the bat. So we can crank this back up. Let's call it, I don't know, 1900. Let's pop our brightness up a couple times. Pop our camera exposure up a couple times. 
And there we go. I mean, that's looking pretty good. So when I show up to this client, they're just going to be wowed, you know, right off the bat. It's just going to be so impressive that we've got this all dialed in. Um, let me see if I've got some countertops that actually match the existing. I'm sure we do in some of the bonus catalogs. Uh, this wild rice might look appropriate. That's a little more gray. Scava's a little off. Probably get into some of the Formica stuff. Would be better. So let me get off of my user filter. Into manufacturers. And then I think their solid surfacing stone probably has something similar here. Something like this. Painted in the room painter mode. Yep. Yeah, that's looking looking pretty accurate the only other thing is doing some of this you know two drawer three drawer four drawer base stuff let's get an object mode paint this guy four drawer what else we got that's about it and what's our time tracker looking like you know 23 minutes 23 minutes and i'm going to show up to this client's house and they are going to be absolutely stunned that i already have this put together and that we could take a look at this and see what we could do and Ultimately, the most fun you can do here, right, is let's switch to just a full height cabinet, shift marquee select, we've got all these cabinets, right? And then why not, let's block it. And then in camera view, this is a dynamic uh, reveal, is we're gonna take this, oops, I gotta go back a level, I just painted four drawers on everything. We're gonna take this and just delete it as a block. How fun is this to show a client? How fun is that, right? So let's go back. I'm gonna unblock this, show you one more really cool trick, okay? So all these cabinets are reporting, um, they're reporting to a schedule. We're gonna do a little schedule mod. So I'm gonna open these all up and I wanna create a little macro on the fly. So in object information, I'm gonna create a new field and it's gonna say cabinet area, okay? In cabinet area, I'm gonna put a macro that I haven't created yet. Underscore area, percentage sign, boom. Right, now all of those have that cabinet area in my project browser. And let's turn off uh, PBR, because it's gonna keep us lagging. Okay, so in our project browser, let's do a line drawing. I wanna get down into my schedules, cabinet schedule, double click this, I want to add that new cabinet area. Okay, I want to add that to my schedule. Now, right now, it's not reporting any values. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is let me just select a cabinet. So I'm testing a macro, and I'm going to get into text macro management. I'm going to do new, and then I'm going to make that cabinet area. Me need to make sure it's spelled perfectly correct, right? So variable equals, and I'm going to do a little. Um, let's go height times width times depth and evaluate and we're going to do owner object and you can see here the data type is measurement 18 boom so let's go look at our cabinet schedule and well, we got a little goof up here we'll figure out what that is in just a second i want to make sure i got cabinet selected select all these cabinet area I can replace this. Let's let's do a replace on this. Oh, that's in the client name value. That's the problem here. Cabinet area. Here we go. User defined cabinet area. Let's go back and look at that cabinet schedule. And look at that. Now, because this um, doesn't have the right classification to display the totals row, instead, I'm going to just do something kind of clever. We'll export it. We're going to export the te text as comma delimited CSV and check open in default spreadsheet editor. And let's just, I'm going to replace this. I've done this a few times. Area calc. Yeah, let's replace it. It's automatically going to open up my Excel sheet. And then I can do equals sum of and highlight this whole section. And now I have total square foot box volume of the existing cabinet. So that when I go do a new cabinet layout for this client, I'm making sure that I'm getting close to the similar box volume. Right. It's not perfect, but it'll certainly get you a nice comparison. If you wanted to do a little bit more of a perfect setup, you could go through the tedious process of drawing in a bunch of polyline solids 
infilling just the inside volume of drawers and stuff like that and then joining them as a union and reporting area for that that's a lot of work this just gives me an idea that i'm you know more or less pretty close to the existing volume of the box so i think that's it for this and i mean all in all what we spend 30 minutes and we've got an incredible setup it's it's showcasing you know our skills um it's it's certainly gonna wow the client you know i can come in here and tweak materials and get it even more accurate if i like i can get this flush mount fixture in there etc but for the purpose of an initial discussion this is a wow factor thing right this is you know just a powerful tool to be able to show someone so i'm utilizing my kitchen quick tools this is in my shop on my website so and i'm only showing just a you know a partial display of those keep in mind so um you can always come in and and uh, come into the shop and and buy individual tools now to kind of check it out to kind of see if you like these tools um, you can do it that way uh, or you can shoot me a message and I'll show you a little demo but um, this is the way I utilize these tools is being able to create stuff like this that I know will sell the job when I get there um, there will be no questions asked they'll immediately want to be a part of this I'll still be building in a full as-built report which is I'm going to measure the entire home and get a separate contract on that they'll get a PDF report with site measurements from fence line observation and then I'll move them into a design contract where I take care of schematic design design development and a bid set or a feasibility set for the contractor before I take it to construction documents I know I'm moving very fast in this video. If you have any questions, please leave some comments. This is really fun for me. I'm excited. I have this meeting tomorrow and here I am. I'm done. I'm prepared. And I know I'm going to come in and just have a nice bit of kit behind me that's just going to give that wow factor when I'm ready. Thanks again for chiming in, tuning in. Please again, leave comments. Appreciate it. Everybody that kind of does a back and forth dialogue with me, it makes my content that much better.